Climbing Mount Baker has been on my list for a while, so when Glenn invited me along, I jumped at the chance. We climbed the Eastern Glacier route, which had a lot of crevasses to avoid, with a super early start to avoid the crowds and the clouds. We started out at the Parkview Trailhead at around 2 o'clock. The first mile through Schreiber's Meadow is pretty mellow. Then we crossed Rocky Creek on a bridge which only allows one person on at a time. Since we're carrying glacier travel gear and camping gear, our packs were pretty heavy, so we took several breaks. Oh, yeah. Then there's another meadow where the trail splits off and goes up a steep rock line staircase. Here's where you really start seeing the mountain in all its glory. And then you come to the railroad grade, which actually doesn't have anything to do with railroads, but is called that because of the continuous Whoa. slope. Here the trail goes at the very edge of the very sharp moraine with massive drop-offs to the right. You can actually see the top now. Yep. First sign of camps. Oh yeah, I see. Yes. As we got higher up, there was also a large group of people practicing running really fast down the snow. Sandy Camp had a lot of tents set up, so we decided to try to go up as high as we could so that we could get a head start in the morning. Three members of our party had actually done crevasse rescue training here a couple of days before and had scoped out some likely sites. Get those tents up here before you leave. Did you find something? Negative two, one, nice. <laughs> I opted to bring just a lightweight tarp, which ended up being hard to set up on the rocks and then I had to move it around several times as the wind shifted. The closest water source was this tiny trickle, which only worked for the first day. We filtered a bunch of water and then had dinner. I had brought my drone up, a small Mini 3 Pro, so I took it up to check out the route and get some glacier shots. Since most of the upper part of the mountain is part of the Mount Baker wilderness, which doesn't allow drones, I was limited to the area around camp and the lower slopes. We headed to bed right around sunset, but falling asleep was made significantly more difficult by the helicopter which buzzed the camp around 10 p.m. We got up at 1 a.m. since we wanted to get ahead of the guided groups, had coffee, and got all of our gear on. The one group of three camped above us got up yeah. even earlier and started up the ridge before we left. We instead went over the ridge and got onto the glacier where we put on crampons. This ended up being the right decision since we passed them sometime later as they were trying to find a way down onto the glacier higher up. Provost to our right. The boot pack at the start wasn't very obvious, so I had to keep checking the GPS track on my phone. We navigated up and left, avoiding the obvious crevasses. After passing a large ice fall to our right, the trail turned to go above it and got more defined. Around 5 a.m., we could see faint light behind the mountain, highlighting the steam coming out of Sherman Crater. As we got closer, we started getting increasingly stronger whiffs of sulfur. We took a quick break here, and the group of three other climbers passed it.
That looks cool. Yeah. After walking by Sherman Crater, the trail gets significantly harder as it goes up a really steep ice field to the right of the Roman wall. There were a couple of potential paths up this, so we picked the less steep one to the left that had more switchbacks. The very top of the trail here is covered in small rocks and sand, which was really annoying as you kept sliding backwards. Once on the top, there's a moderately steep section that levels out as you get on top of the summit crater and closer to the actual summit. There's the summit. We met the other group of climbers on the summit, but they left quickly after that, so we had it to ourselves. The wind was really strong, so we didn't stay for long. We took a break at the sandy part because there was another group coming up the Roman wall and we didn't want to knock down any rocks on top of them. There's the steam coming out of the crater. We had talked about climbing Sherman Peak as well, so when we made it down below the crater, three of us unroped and traversed around the rocks to the right. Heading up to Sherman Peak, maybe. We made it up onto the ridge overlooking Sherman Crater, but the higher up part of the ridge was super unstable, so we decided to turn back around. On our way down, we passed several guided groups heading up, but at this point, the summit was already covered by clouds, so we were really glad we had gotten an early start. On the way down, it was really cool to actually be able to see the crevasses that we had hiked by in the dark. Once we got low enough, we took a break and I got the drone out, although looking at this now, we could have picked a safer stopping point. That is sweet. You can like hear water running down there. We are almost back at camp just over this ridge. Top is still socked in. After a brief nap, we packed up and headed back down. The way back was long and annoying, with frequent stops to let the many, many groups hiking up for the weekend pass us by. 